Big changes start today at your favorite bar or restaurant. Even the church you go to may be affected. Governor Doug Burgum signed an executive order to implement new measures to stop the spread of COVID-19. The Valley Today's Brian Sherrod joins us live this morning with full details on the changes you will see. Good morning, Brian. And good morning, Lisa. It's exactly like what you said. There are going to be changes with those three establishments. And of course, places like Old Broadway, like that's right behind me, is a bar and a restaurant. So it's kind of double the change when it comes to them. So I'm going to go ahead and let you know the changes that they're also seeing, and this is going to impact their patrons as well. So they're limited to 50% of their licensed seating capacity. They must not exceed 150 people. They're closed to in-person service between 10 at night to 4 in the morning. Takeout, curbside, and delivery services are allowed, and they are encouraged during these hours. Governor Bergen reminded the public to please continue supporting these local businesses. And if you do go inside, do not forget your mask. They're not going to let you in. Now, churches will also see changes starting today involving capacity with multiple different venues. Funerals, weddings, and services knocked down to allowing 25% capacity, so that's half of what I just told you about bars and restaurants. And they're also letting you know that's a maximum with 50 people, which is also 100 less compared to them as well. Now, many churches like Living Water Lutheran Church are moving their services online. Now, this is used to stop the spread of COVID-19 because these numbers are skyrocketing in our area. Just last week, when I was putting in the numbers for the noon show, one day in Cass County had 404 positive cases. That's the highest I've seen since being here. So we definitely want to knock those numbers down. Now, so far, there was no timetable with how long this executive order is going to last. But once we receive that information, we will update you with the latest. All the information I just gave you just now can be found on our VNL News app and our web channel. Just type in changes with churches, bars and restaurants, and you'll find a full article listed right there. Okay, lots of big changes, and I'm sure lots of discussion today as well. Brian Sherratt reporting live for us. Thank mm -hmm. you. One group of about 100 North Dakota doctors is applauding Governor Doug Burgum's mask mandate. However, at least one sheriff out in western North Dakota seems to be turning the thumbs down. Stark County Sheriff Corey Lee is on Facebook saying his deputies will not be enforcing mask mandates or new mandates on businesses. Now we're also hearing that the sheriff in Hedinger County is saying the same thing. They'll be promoting instead a message of community safety. And people are trying to make their voices heard after the governor announced that all high school winter sports in North Dakota and other extracurricular K-12 school activities are suspended until December 14th. A petition has been created saying students need to be in those extracurricular activities. It also goes on to say how those activities are beneficial for children's mental well-being. A West Fargo City Commissioner is calling the school district's COVID protocols into question after attempting to call her daughter out sick. Mandy George says she attempted to call her daughter out with what she called a minor stomach ache and headache. But because of the school district's screening protocol, she was told that her daughter would have to stay home for 10 days or go get tested for COVID-19. George calls the policy over the top and says this has her second guessing reporting symptoms like this in the future. West Fargo Public Schools tell us that they are by no means saying that any individual who does not pass the screening has COVID, but they are just taking precautions to protect students and anyone they say may have come in contact with them. New this morning, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is standing up with frontline workers to urge people to do what's necessary to fight the spread of COVID-19. He's holding a news conference this afternoon to outline what steps to take to help protect yourself and others. Snow to start off our Monday. Let's get a check of that first alert storm team forecast with Lisa Green. Yeah, and it's fallen right at the worst time, right for that morning drive here this morning, and it continues to fall in some places, too. In Fargo, we've had that fresh coating, very thin layer, but enough to uh, cause some slick roads out there. You can see that we've got some shiny surfaces along I-94, though, as vehicles have moved over and, and crews have been out treating it, uh, the more of the road has been visible. Looks like we've got a DOT crew moving through right now along that interchange. And I-94, actually, University, you could see some of those interchange on and off ramps are looking rather snowy and the uh, intersections as well. So going to be a tougher start here today, not only in Fargo, but in other places where we have experienced and continue to see that snow coming down. This is part of a very fast moving clipper, which is good because some of these snowfall rates are a little bit stronger, a little bit uh, more substantial, and you could get a quick two inches of snow with this before it's all said and done in some places in Lakes Country. We're easing up a little in Devil's Lake after seeing about an inch and a half of snow there. If you 
are in Lakes Country, you can see the scattered areas of snow specifically in Becker County, up into Monoman County. You see those deeper blues. That's where we're looking at some heavier snow going on at this point in time and just south of Grand Forks too. And that's all going to slip to the south and east here this morning. So that's the main round, though there will still be some flakes out there as well. Here's a look at our current conditions. We're seeing some snow being reported in several locations. Fargo, some flakes still being reported. Detroit Lakes, Fergus Falls, quieting down in Grand Forks and Devil's Lake, Bemidji. Also just seeing some mostly cloudy skies, at least at the airport, being reported there. Temperatures, upper teens to some upper 20s for most areas. It's a little different on the fringes where we're not seeing any snow at all. It's much colder up around Lake of the Woods and much warmer over by Jamestown and then south and west from there. And you can see in our afternoon planner, that's exactly how our afternoon is going to shape up as well. We're looking at Northern Valley being into the 20s and the snow winding down as we advance through the morning and into the afternoon. And in the Southern Valley into the 30s with some areas of sunshine, other places where we're still dealing with some clouds. So an active morning to start. You're going to want extra time, plenty of time to get to where you need to be, to brush off your car if you park outside. And then tomorrow, some sunshine returns and we start warming as we headed to Wednesday. Okay, a bit, a, bit, a bit of good news there. Thank you, Lisa. It's now four minutes before seven. Police, family, and friends are asking for help finding a 13-year-old runaway from Fargo. Timoteo Gomez was last seen at the Family Fair grocery store on North University right around 5.30 last night. He left walking eastbound on 8th Avenue. Family members think he may be at an unknown friend's house. Gomez was wearing a gray sweatshirt, light blue jeans, and black shoes. Family thinks he may have a backpack with a PlayStation inside. Fargo police are investigating two separate reports of gunshots in the same neighborhood in North Fargo. Around 3.30 yesterday morning, officers responded to the 1000 block of 16th Street North near NDSU's campus on a report of gunshots. A man was found with injuries and taken to the hospital. Then about three hours later, another call about gunshots in that same neighborhood. Officers initially did not find anyone, but Sanford Health later called police, saying that a man with a gunshot wound was in their ER. Police learned that victim was shot in that same Northside neighborhood. Police say both victims are expected to be okay. A Fargo man is hurt and facing charges after police say he led officers on a chase through Clay and Cass counties. It started in Clay County yesterday. But deputies lost sight of the car as it headed into North Dakota. Then Cass County deputies spotted the vehicle, but the driver took off again. Finally, a North Dakota Highway Patrol officer picked up on the chase on County Road 15, just south of Horace. Stop sticks were used. The driver lost control when he hit those stop sticks and rolled his vehicle into a ditch. 23-year-old Brandon Jacobson was rushed to the hospital for his injuries. He's likely to be charged with reckless driving, DUI, and fleeing. There's no word yet on his condition. A new COVID-19 testing site opens in Crookston today, and here's a look at the schedule through the end of the year. It'll be set up at the National Guard Armory and will run from noon to 6 p.m. over the course of 23 days through December. Tests this first week run today through Wednesday and then next Monday and Tuesday. There are 18 other test days in December. You can pre-register on the Minnesota Department of Health website. And UND will also be hosting another walk-up COVID testing event today. It's happening from 11 to 5. Testing will take place at UND's High Performance Center. All ages are welcome. Just make sure you pre-register and wear a mask. Applications open this week for free laptops in Ottertail County for people who need access to a computer for job searching, distance learning, and other activities impacted during the pandemic. You can get one with six months of paid internet access through the Tech Pack Project. This program is only available to those impacted by COVID-19. Applications will be accepted this Wednesday through Friday. That's the 18th through the 20th. There's also a link on our website. You can find that at valleynewslive.com. Just click on this story. And let's get the answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, this Thanksgiving, which is now just two weeks away, one in four Americans will be doing this. The answer, cooking a turkey for the first time. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. Join us right now for more live, up-to-the-minute news and weather on the Fargo CW.